What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is Friday. It is time for the weekend, and it is time for the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang Stocks. We are on earnings eve and earnings watch for all of these companies. Next week, we will have Netflix earnings on the 18th. Next week, also on the 18th, we will have Tesla earnings. And following that, all of these companies report. I'll give you the dates as we roll things through, but we better kick things off like we always do with Meta Platforms. Start of the week at 314. End of the week, basically flat on the last five days at about 314. Meta reports their earnings 12 days from now on October 25th. OpenAI plans to unveil some new updates at a San Francisco developer conference on November 6th. If I'm in California, I will try to attend that event. I think there'll be a lot of interesting news, but they're planning new updates, potentially lower costs to attract more developers. And the reason why I'm throwing this into the meta news is meta is really kind of throwing a wrench in these types of things is they're releasing all of their language models for quote unquote free open source. Now you still have to figure out a way to host that model I'll train it and do all those different types of things and maybe paying open AI's API feed or paying whatever feed that they're having to use for kind of the usage. Maybe it works out to where there's not a big cost difference, but companies with large infrastructure already probably could go the open source route. We'll see what materializes certainly over the next couple of weeks here for OpenAI. Not a lot of news for Meta as again, they're approaching earnings. Moving on to Apple, start of the week at 176. This stock climbing over 1.5%. Finish the week close to $179 per share. Apple reports their earnings after most of these companies on November 2nd, so several weeks away still. Now, Google's search deal with the company said to be worth between 18 and $20 billion annually, and that could account for anywhere between 14 and 16% of Apple's operating profits. So just the Google Safari default search deal is almost 14 to 16% of Apple's total operating profits. This is why I contend that Apple is not going to launch their own AI thing. I think the much more beneficial thing to not only the company, but certainly shareholders would be to get Microsoft and Google and Amazon and maybe Meta and whoever else wants to fight it out and be the default AI for Siri or Safari or whatever default thing that they have going on over at Apple. I would let these companies battle it out because that is a wildly, I mean, we're talking a wickedly profitable business for the company, particularly as it relates to AI. You'd probably have even more companies bidding for that. Could be even worth more than $20 billion annually that they get for the search. Now, teens are buying iPhones at near record levels. That's according to research over at Piper Sandler. Now, the research is interesting because they do note that the Apple Watch interest has slipped. However, when you're talking to teens, 39% of the respondents say that Apple was its favorite watch, followed by 35% for Rolex. Now, I haven't hung out in the Beverly Hills. I'm sure you can find some Rolex watches on the wrist over there, but most teens that I'm around, while they're aware of Rolex and they probably would like like one. They don't certainly have the money for one. So liking and having interest in something versus having the money for it, certainly two different things. But I will tell you just based on my own anecdotal thing, being around middle school age kids, I, I teach a finance class. In fact, that's what I was just at just now. Uh, they're very much interested in iPhones and it, it's the one brand that they tend to talk about as it relates to phones. Now, Apple and Broadcom settled a Wi-Fi chip patent lawsuit with the great California Institute of Technology or Cal Caltech. Caltech alleged that dating back to 2016, iPhones, iPads, and Apple Watches that used an Apple modem that was actually designed by Broadcom infringed on some Caltech patents and the companies and the sides have reached a settlement. I'm sure Caltech might be erecting a new building on the dime of Broadcom and Apple as we speak. Moving on to Amazon, start of the week at 125, up actually a solid week for Amazon, up over 3.7%, finished the week close to 130. Amazon reports their earnings 13 days from now 
on October 26th. The company has been in cost-saving mode. We've seen them shut down some stores. We've seen Andy Jassy actually make, in my opinion, some tough decisions with some of the investments that they were making. They started to right-size their fulfillment centers as well. They have that massive build-out as you, you were into kind of the COVID era, and they maybe are subleasing or getting out of some of the leases that they don't necessarily need there. Uh, some of those costs, we've, we've seen a little bit of it flow through to Amazon earnings. You should see even more in the most recent quarter. So obviously 13 days from now, we'll have close eye on that for Amazon. Now the iRobot deal received shareholder approval for Amazon. Now this deal was originally Amazon paying iRobot shares. Well, iRobot is a public company and it makes these robot vacuum makers. And this deal was several months ago. Amazon's agreed to a $61 per share price, but they revised that deal based on some debt and some other things with iRobot. Now it's down to $51.75. I'm seeing at the current time iRobot is trading at just $38 per share. So certainly the market doesn't believe that this deal is, is going to get done. I mean, that's a $13 premium, but we'll honestly see. I, I tend, like, I'm not recommending you go and play the arbitrage spread. There, There is a strategy there where you, you buy these companies and you play that spread. I think you have to factor in like short-term capital gains. So you have to minus that off what tax bracket you are in. So it might seem like, oh, I can automatically make $13 per share if, the, if this deal goes down. Yeah, again, you have to factor in taxes and then the deal falling apart. If the deal falls apart, I mean, what's going to happen to iRobot shares <laughs> probably would collapse. Moving on to Netflix or the week at 383. And I tell you what, the week before earnings, investors sold these shares down over 7.3%. Amazon reports their earnings just five days from now on the 18th. And again, investors fleeing the scene before the company reports their earnings again, five days from now. Now the Writers Guild, which obviously relates a lot to Netflix when it comes to entertainment, the writers are getting back to work and they overwhelmingly approve the new contract that runs through May 1st of 2026. So I tell you what, we're gonna be, before you blink, we're gonna be back at the bargaining table in just a couple of years, but they approve this with a 99% vote. That's good for Netflix in the long run. Now, Netflix changed its ad chief as its growth is starting to struggle on that ad tier side. Now, I am one of these people when Amazon, or excuse me, in this case, Netflix announced that they were going to do an ad tier. I was pretty bullish about that from a revenue perspective eventually kind of a profit perspective. I mean, there's just a lot of people out there. They don't want to pay $12.99 or whatever it is for Netflix every month. And they don't mind sitting through ads. There's, there's plenty of you that watch these YouTube videos and, and sit through an ad every once in a while. And, and we certainly appreciate it here at the Investor Channel. I was surprised that this is not taken off as fast as it could, certainly from a revenue and a demand perspective. Netflix making some changes to maybe see what happens there. Now, Netflix could potentially be getting into live sports into 2020. Now that also relates to advertising because if you're going to get live sports, you certainly can supplement the cost of that with some advertising. There's been certainly some rumors in the past as it relates to Netflix, maybe getting a tennis deal, maybe getting the F1 deal. They run, they have these docu-series that I think they follow around PGA Tour. They followed around F1. I think they probably don't. I'm not a huge Netflix guy, so I don't know, but I think they probably have other things as well. And so the, to me, that's the reason why you get into live sports for Netflix is you get the live sports. You're probably not going to make a ton of money off that, but then you basically just cross sell them onto if you, let's say you pick up like the tennis tour or whatever, then you, you know, you, I think they already have that series, but maybe you double down on that series because you're bringing in a real, real focused audience that loves tennis and then you feed them other tennis shows. I, I think that's obviously what they're going for. Now, very interesting development here. Netflix plans a permanent fan destination as it has an location, like physical locations. Now, they've done pop-ups. Netflix has kind of tested this. I think we ran a story a couple of weeks ago where they, they had the celebrity chefs that have shows on Netflix. I think they rented out a hotel or they had a portion of a hotel in Los Angeles where those chefs were going to be. And it was kind of a Netflix thing. I think they called it like Netflix bites. This is going to be called Netflix house. It's going to have retail live events, even dining options 
as well. The company essentially kind of maybe combining everything that they think that they can happen there. I think this is a great idea. If you look at Disney, I mean, what is working over at Disney? It's actually their physical locations. It's Disneyland. Now, this certainly isn't Disneyland, but it certainly could be a version of that, if you will, for Netflix. Moving on to NVIDIA, start of the week at 445. Had a nice start to the week. Ended up over 2% on the week to finish the week at $454 per share. NVIDIA, the last to report their earnings of this group, although you'll have AMD and Intel and other companies report. NVIDIA reporting on November 21st. This is also kind of the semiconductor version of the Fang Stock Recap Show. So we'll talk about Taiwan Semi AMD when the news provides itself. Now, Taiwan Semi may start an advanced chip production in a second Japanese plant. Now, remember, anytime you have these additional production facilities, it is good for the overall supply chain. But understand that these chips, where they are manufactured, isn't where the job is done. You have to maybe have co-packaging done. You might have to have memory chips that are coming in from China. In fact, I think all the memory chips for these things come in through China. So if there is a war, if there is conflict, if there's trade, all those types of things, tariffs, well, it still impacts. It doesn't matter if you're making them out here in Arizona or Ohio or Japan or in Taiwan, you know, and look, the final device often gets assembled in China. And so we're a long, long ways away from diversifying the supply chain out of Taiwan. But this is a step in that direction. Taiwan Semiconductor may get U.S. waiver. They already have this U.S. waiver. Looks like it'll get extended maybe another year for chip equipment into China. I talked about how SK Hynix and Samsung, located in China, have a waiver to receive certain equipment because they are the number one and top memory makers. That memory is being used on, obviously, a lot of chips, including the high-powered AI ones made by NVIDIA and others. These restrictions, I think, are more tough talk and more for something for a press release. My sources indicate that most of these sanctions can easily be moved around as most things in Washington, there's a loophole for just about anything. NVIDIA may benefit as Taiwan saw its September gaming data well above expectations. I think this probably benefits AMD as well. They rolled out a new graphics card for met for the gaming market as well. And so I think it probably benefits NVIDIA being the top dog, but uh, the AMD card as well seemed to be very well received. ASML, which makes lithography equipment, I tell you what, you would not have any of these advanced chips if it wasn't for ASML. Well, it's believed they have a monopoly on that business. They make these big giant machines. They cost like, like I think two or three hundred million dollars, and they're incredibly complex machines. Huge feat of engineering. Well, Canon, which also makes lithography machines, not on the bleeding edge like the two, three nanometer stuff. They make lithography machines for other purposes. Well, they said that they have unveiled an advanced tool to create advanced semiconductors. Again, these are going to be your two and three nanometer devices, enough to be powerful enough to be like in the iPhone 15, which uses a three nanometer process. Company claims it's actually started selling these machines. Uh, I will be doing some more research on this and seeing if there's an opportunity there. Now, AMD is to require an open source AI software called, I think, Nod.ai. This software is going to allow them to easily deploy high-performing AI models tuned to AMD hardware. It's underestimated, and maybe not from this audience, but from the broader investment world. It's underestimated how powerful and how great NVIDIA software is. My sources indicate that, yes, NVIDIA still, with their CUDA software, has a lead over the competition, but that that lead is closing mainly due to open source models and these companies realizing that's the lead that NVIDIA have and they're investing into acquisition and the software there. Moving on to Google, start of the week at $136 per share, also relatively flat, up about three quarters of percent, finished the week at about 137. Google reports their earnings 11 days from now, on October 24th. Now, Sonos, which is a, essentially a speaker maker, shares of that company dipping as the patent case in or against Google has been updated. The speaker maker getting a $32.5 million jury ruling. 
but a judge, a favorable judge as it relates to Google is essentially vacating that ruling and uh, really siding with Google. This is why when you have these battles in court, I don't care if it's Google's lawyers versus the United States lawyers or certainly Google's lawyers versus Sonos's lawyers, my money is always on the like the $1.7 trillion lawyers versus anybody else practically. Now, Google, to face some AI backlash, th that is a an assumption and it's probably true. As Google is going to layer BARD function, BARD is their AI tool. I think they're going to rename it Gemini likely or, or something different. But their next voice assistant is going to incorporate AI. And obviously you can get these AIs to say some really weird things and that's probably going to be spread around social media but uh you know that's that's just the price you have to pay for innovation google search deal we talked about this as it relates to apple 20 billion dollars annually what would these companies pay again to be the default ai voice assistant on apple I think that'd be, sounds like a great business to me. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at 324, up over a percent. Finish the week a little over $327 per share. Microsoft reporting their earnings also the same day as Google, 11 days from now on October 24th. OpenAI, the company that Microsoft made a large investment in earlier this year, they say that their sales are growing at 46 times a 2022 rate. The company generating more than $100 million a month in revenue or a shade over $1.3 billion per year. That compares to the fact that the company made just $28 million last year. So you went from $28 million in revenue. Now you're probably going to approach $1.3 billion. This is why the company nears a stock sale at a $90 billion valuation. So you're trading just south of 90 times sales. And some people are going to argue, and there's probably plenty of people out there that are going to argue, well, oh my God, that is so overvalued. Well, well, guys, again, when you grow from $28 million to $1.3 billion, you're going to get a premium valuation on those sales and OpenAI is capitalizing on that. Microsoft's $69 billion purchase of Activision closes with UK approval. I mean, this deal's done and 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 I don't think anybody's going to stand in the way of that. Micro this was the headline of the week, I think. Microsoft received notice from the IRS for a nearly $29 billion in back taxes this is for the years 2004 through 2013. So nine years, you're looking at a little over $3 billion a year in back taxes. Uh, again, I'm going to take uh, Microsoft's accountants and their lawyers against the IRS. They'll settle for a lower amount. But I, when I saw that cross, it was like, well, yeah, our government's broke. So, uh, you know, where do you go? The companies with the most money. I, I don't blame them, honestly. Moving on to Tesla, start of the week at 253, down just fractionally or a little more than fractionally, down about a percent. Again, Tesla also reporting five days from now, same day as Netflix on October 18th. Tesla's employees at the German factory they're expressing concerns over working conditions. So we obviously don't like to see that, but I guess there's a silver lining to this because the workers are facing, quote, high workloads resulting in staff shortages and very high production targets. So if they're facing high workloads and high production targets, what does that tell you about the demand for Teslas in Germany? probably tells you they're pretty damn good. Now we want them to treat their workers well, and they did announce a pay raise for German plant workers amid a union dispute. At the manufacturing facility, the union has voiced concerns about wage levels falling below industry standards, and we hope Tesla can come to terms there. Now, the wage dispute here in the United States, oh, it's getting serious. The United Auto Workers strike is getting close to a tipping point after they shut down a, I believe it was a Ford facility in Kentucky that sent shockwaves throughout the industry since that was one of their highly profitable truck plants. Once you start going for the trucks, that's when things get serious. And so I think th this probably means we're coming close to a resolution. And if you don't, Oh my goodness, that is not good when you stop making those trucks for these companies because that's where all the profits are. Moving over to the technical segment of the show, the S&P 500 bounced off a very logical level. Some of this probably was attributable to, if you were shorting this market, this is where you'd probably take off some short. And I mean, I don't want to speak for the short sellers, but 
me personally would do that. Now, nothing, nothing has changed. Okay. Micro, micro, micro trend. We're talking about just over the past, uh, you know, 60 to 90 days, you've got a high, lower, high, lower, high. So nothing's been confirmed there, but still intermediate trend. You're making higher lows, higher highs. You're still in this uptrend. The other thing that you could argue is if that's a top, you made a high, lower high, bears would say you're going to just continue to make lower highs and you're in for a reversal. Now, again, the longer trend, which doesn't support any of that, is you're basically straight up with S&P 500. Markets go up, I guess is, is a term they say. And uh, my guess is that trend isn't going to stop anytime soon. Moving to Meta again, this company reports their earnings October 25th, consolidating sideways, but actually looks really promising. Okay. You've made, I think a new high there. That's good. If you look at the, kind of the micro trend for Meta, another kind of higher low, higher high. This is after you, I mean, you were on this breakneck. This was just a breakneck trend that had to break. It did. You kind of chopped sideways, but now again, you've made a new higher high. This looks really good. And I, I think you hover and you consolidate in this range until the company reports earnings, a break lower for meta. Again, this is all from a technical perspective. We'll analyze it fundamentally when the company reports, but all things being equal, a break lower pulls you into consolidation, probably should be bought a break higher to the all time highs probably sees resistance at 380, which is, you know, still $70 higher or a break above it, those are selling opportunities. And the reason why you get that sense is because you look at a company like Apple, we'll look at Microsoft here in a moment too, break to all time highs, almost always back test to the highs. That's what Apple has done. Now there's nothing really alarming. I mean, if, again, you want to look at the micro micro trend, you made a high lower set, a lower set of highs. The company reports their earnings, not until November 2nd, but the market will probably move as these other companies start to report. Apple will move along with them lower, lower as well for Apple, but you are basically just consolidating around the previous highs, which were made back here in January of 22 at about $175 per share. You're just kind of hanging out there until you get a break higher or lower. You're not really doing anything with Apple to give you something actionable, a break below 160. That's when you start opening your wallet for more shares. Very similar with Amazon. It's in a slightly different technical position than most of these stocks. We have not broken to new highs and the highs are still a ways away. You're still up here at about 190 per share. And so you're $60 away and you really have to get through some sideways chop to get there. A break lower for Amazon probably should be bought, but I would say that low is probably back down here at about $100 per share and move higher probably could be taking some profits. Netflix certainly looks like a topping pattern to me here. You consolidated at a price and then really decisively broke down, but you're breaking into some consolidation area and it's a wide, I mean, it's a wide gap. I think you can actually push that to like right there from like 275 to where the shares are right now. You have kind of pierced through the previous highs here and you've closed below them. To me, this one looks like it wants to go lower. Now, complicating the situation is you have earnings on the 18th and you've just really had kind of a massive sell-off from like 440 down to 350 on this one. So the expectations aren't high heading into earnings. And so we'll see. To me, I would just stay away from this one until you get earnings again, just five days from now. Moving on to NVIDIA, beautiful, just a beautiful, I mean, a beautiful technical pattern in the shorter term. Since you've kind of gapped up into the kind of the AI craze, it, like the, the pattern hasn't broke, okay? You've made higher highs, higher lows. You had some deviation here, but we bounced off the lows. Now you're looking for this one to make a new high. You need to get above or right around $510 per share. If you get rejected at that level, you start pulling lower, this gap filling is a probability. The gap fills, that's when you're looking to buy NVIDIA. Google, it probably has the best looking chart, again, in kind of the medium term. You're still making higher highs. You're making higher lows. You confirmed another higher high this week. 
this chart just looks great. You're continuing to hold with Google. Now, moving on to Microsoft, the chart looks exactly like Apple. You broke to new highs, and then ever since then, you've been making a lower series of highs, lower series of lows, but at the same time, you're you're basically just back testing and consolidating at the previous clusters of highs back here, very similar to Apple back in December and January of 2022. You also have a much longer term. This purple line in here is not drawn in here perfectly, but that's the longer term trend. I mean, that's like the decade long trend with Microsoft, a pullback anywhere to that area, particularly south of like 285 or 290 on Microsoft is a back the truck up moment. Now, Moving on to Tesla, very similar to Google, but not quite similar quite yet. Doesn't surprise me that we're kind of hesitating into earnings with Tesla. Again, just five days from now on October 18th, you've pretty much just gone sideways with the shares. You could argue that you're making a lower series of highs here, but it's not confirmed with lower lows. You've just flagged sideways. Now the company reports their delivery numbers. We can back into the revenue and the profits relatively easy. It's really what Elon Musk says on that conference call and 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 what he is bullish about and how well he talks things up, talks things down. You also have the looming cyber truck, which we thought was coming in Q3. Not surprisingly, Tesla kind of over promises, under delivers on some things. You know, any positive commentary on that in terms of production numbers or production expectations certainly could help the sellers drive higher. But oftentimes what we've seen with Tesla after they report earnings there, there's usually actually a knee drop lower, any drop into the 212 range for Tesla, again, barring any fundamental change, that 210, well, it's a wider range than that. From 190 to 210, that is where you found demand for Tesla shares. And that's the first area where I'd have interest in shares of the electric vehicle maker. Folks, that was the Fang Stock Recap Show for Friday, October 13th. We will be back next week. For Netflix and Tesla earnings, I've also got another special interview lined up for the channel as well and some other special guests as we move through the next couple of weeks. I think you'll enjoy those. Hopefully you have a safe and fun weekend. I'll see you again next week. Good luck with your investments.